Hello and welcome to Around the Wickets by the Puppet.com. As you know, this is Cricket's weekly brief that takes a summarized look at our favorite sport. Now, this week we thought of focusing our attention on Sri Lanka Pakistan and particularly about the third test match and why we lost the series. Now, we thought we will uh, seek expert opinion and who else? We thought of uh, speaking to Farvish Maharuf and ask his view as to why we lost the third test match. So let's start off with the third test match, Maha. And uh, what is your view? Why do you think Sri Lanka lost this third test match? Especially, we had them, uh, I would say, under pressure when they had to score 377 to win. I mean, uh, what I, how I look at it is uh, the way we bowled, actually. I mean, we didn't have a better plan. And when we had them for 13 for 2, I thought uh, we were in the driving seat. But somehow they battled well. I'm not taking anything away from the Pakistan team. They battled brilliantly. But I think we lacked a bit of discipline when it comes to bowling. And uh, that way it cost us the game uh, pretty badly. Well, there is a, a universal view that Rangan Heerat should have been there. And Tarindu Kaushal just couldn't cope with the pressure. Do you subscribe to it? I think they would have thought, with the, seeing the wicket with a bit of grass, you know, Kaushal would have been ideal. But I'm with you, Roshan, that I thought even I was surprised when I saw the team that Rangan wasn't playing because the amount of experience they have and uh, vulnerability the Pakistanis against left arm spinner. I mean, that was a big call that we took. And positively, he bowled well in the first innings, but unfortunately, in the second innings, uh, he couldn't do well and, uh, you know, he was leaking too much runs. And what about the batting? Now, if you look at the Sri Lankan scores, just twice past 300 in the series. Now, we're looking at batsmen who are expected to take the place of Sangha and Mahela. How, how do you see this? I mean, I have, for a certain extent, I'm pretty happy the way the guys who came back to the team trying to cement a place better, like Jihan and Upul. You know, I think though they didn't make big runs, they looked good. And even Chandi, after failing the first few innings, you know, he batted really well. And, uh, you know, Dimuth and Kaushal did a good job. And Angelo was obviously, I mean, every time when, when the chips are down, he's, he's there to uh, take the ship, uh, ship forward. <coughs> when it comes to Thiriman, I was a bit disappointed. Some of the shot he, shots he played. And if he, he seems a guy who is out of form. And uh, I just hope that he comes to the, uh, comes to the party because as a, as a vice captain, he has a big responsibility to score runs. I mean, he's a good player. He has proven he's a top, top class player. Just that, I mean, for me, it's a matter of time he scores runs. But uh, apart from him, I think I'm pretty satisfied the way we batted. And uh, as a batting group, they did well. As, as, as a bowling group, we did even better, I think. Well, one of the things that uh, most people are wanting to know is, is Sri Lanka having enough talent? Is Sri Lanka having young players coming through? Now, Favis Maharuf plays a lot of first-class cricket in this country. How do you see that? I think there are. I mean, the system is really well now. I mean, with the new uh, concept of having 14 teams, it's much better. The quality is better. I think there are lots of players, but just that, you know, we have to identify a crop of players who we think who's going to get uh, take our cricket forward. I think the work is under process with uh, the new selection committee coming in. You know, they have uh, put some squads in different squads, like a development squad, pretty much A team and stuff. So I think as a first class player playing for the last three, four years continuously, I've seen a lot of players come through uh, the system. So I think our cricket is in safe hands, but just that the the, the youngsters should know to be consistent. That's the biggest challenge. Yes, consistency is uh, no doubt the name of the game. Now, the three test series is over. So, Sri Lanka has to just forget about it and look to move forward. And the next big assignment is the five one days. And Sri Lanka has now come up with a new one day squad, new looking one day squad, I should say. Two new players and also some, I would say, surprising selections as well. Now, we thought of talking to Favis Maharuf and getting his views about the one day side, especially about the two new cricketers, Melinda Sirivardhana and Sachit Patirana. Now, my first reaction was similar players. I mean, why do you want to have two left-handed all-rounders in the same 15? I think Melinda goes as a batting all-rounder and Sachit goes as a bowling all-rounder. That's where I can see. And plus, I mean, good to see two players who have done well in the domestic circuit in the last two years have been recognized. I mean, that was lacking in the last few years where the first class uh, who has done well in the first class wasn't recognized well. I mean, this time Melinda had a very good season last year, even with Sajid Patirana. So good to see them uh, getting a chance. And more, uh, others as well. I mean, it's, it's high time. I mean, we are in a process of rebuilding after Kumar and Maya left us. So I think uh, it's, it's a big challenge. I mean, places are for grabs, so it's pretty much how badly the player wants it. And it's a tremendous opportunity, you know, coming, uh, coming to the 2020 World Cup to stamp your authorities. 
Yeah. Now, we've seen that Kitruan Vidanage, who's considered an explosive player, not in this one-day side. Do you think the selectors have got it wrong, bringing him into the test matches, but not playing him in the one-day game? Because we, are, we feel he's more suited there. Personally, I would think that uh, he's more suited for the one-day game as well. But uh, I'm pretty sure selectors must be having their own own ideas and thoughts. So, I mean, I would love to see Kitruan, uh, Kitruan in the one-day squad. But, I mean, it's a challenge up, up, up to him now to score runs, go back to the domestic cricket, which is starting very soon, to score, score some runs and get back. Now, we've seen players like Ajanta Mendes just fading off. Now, he's not in the one-day side and, and I don't know what the future is for him uh, with Sri Lanka cricket. How do you see Ajanta Mendes? Because you would have played with him uh, you know, in the, in the recent uh, first-class games. Ajanta, I think he, at the moment he's nursing a back injury. He uh, did it while playing the first-class season. I think at the moment uh, he's training with us, with uh, Scott, he's under rehabilitation. He started running, so I think he'll, he'll take some time to overcome his uh, back injury, but uh, I'm pretty sure that the bowler of his kind with his record, I'm pretty sure he'll come back, but at the moment he's uh, getting back uh, fit from injury. How do you see this uh, Sri Lankan team? Do you think they have the wherewithal, they have the ability to defeat Pakistan, especially after Pakistan overcame Sri Lanka in the Test Series? How do you see this? Pretty much so. I'm play, uh, with the home advantage being a big uh, big matter in this thing. And other thing would be Pakistan before this series, they lost 3-0 to Bangladesh. So psychologically, they will be down. So it's up to us, up to our guys to, you know, from the first game, not letting them... Uh, you know, come back to the one-day one day setup, and it all depends on how we start. And usually, you know, we don't start well, and we finish off well. So hopefully, from this series, we will start well from the first game. Finish off as hopefully a five-nil clean sweep. Well, that's what all Sri Lankans will be hoping for: at least a five-nil clean sweep to try and a bend for the loss in the test series. So that's the story as far as the local thing is concerned and Sri Lanka, Pakistan. But you also know that a big series is happening. Ashes, England versus Australia. We know Favis Maruf is a massive supporter of Australia, but we want him to sp speak from his head and not from his heart. <laughs> Yeah, well, I would say it's a close, closely contested Ashes this time, especially being Ryan Harris being retired. That's my number one thing because he's, he's a bowler for any conditions and any captain would love to have a bowler of that calibre in the team. So him being not in the squad, I think it makes even with the quick, quick, fast bowlers in the both sides. I mean, bowlers win matches when it comes to test matches. So I think it's a closely contested uh, series this year. One thing that confuses me about the England selection is Moin Ali. Now, Moin Ali came into the side as a batsman who could bowl. But the roles seem to have been reversed now. England want him to bowl first and then bat. And I get, I get the feeling that, that that role seemed to have affected his cricket. How do you see Moin Ali moving forward, being a part-time spinner and expected to lead an, uh, a spin bowler's role? I think more than par he's a, more than a part time now. I mean, he's the number one spinner. Looking at the last few Test matches England played, he was the only spinner in the team, and they played three fast bowlers and an all rounder. Yeah, as a bowler, he hasn't done well, but I'm pretty sure, you know, with the variety he has, he has to come up well. I mean, if not, England will be struggling without a good spinner in this team. But when it comes to fast bowling, England has a good good pace attack. Come with this. Uh, new uh, fast bowler called Mark Wood. He, he was rapid in the series against uh, New Zealand. So that, it's going to be a very interesting series, see how it goes. And it all depends on the bowlers. And uh, for me, the man to look out is Stephen Smith. I mean, the amount of runs he has scored for the last two years is unbelievable. And hopefully, you know, English can, England can tackle him and uh, look after the others. So how do you honestly feel this series moving forward? Do you think England, England can manage to try and surprise Australia? Uh, possible, possible, but uh, at the moment I would say underdogs are England. Favourites would be Australia, but when it comes to Ashes, you know, it's it's a it's a different ball game. It's a lot of emotions, you know, get involved. I mean, uh, you know, it won't be easy, but for me, it's Australia. Right. I told you he's a strong supporter of Australia and he still thinks it's Australia. So that's the story on Around the Wickets on Papare.com and we hope you enjoyed it. Follow the Papare.com for all that's cricket and send in your queries to hash Around the Wickets on Twitter and also on Facebook or email us at editor the